Good day to you all, to your survivors and caretakers and loved ones, and everyone impacted by the traumatic brain injury, which can be confusing, frustrating, and at times overwhelming. You've all arrived at a place where you will find support, understanding, and information, and most of all, guidance on your journey of discovery here on the Roadmap. I'm your host and moderator, Joe Quinn. We're joined by two distinguished panelists today, William Lowe and Ralph Preston. Each of us have suffered a TBI like yours, and like yours, ours was unique and full of challenges. During each of our programs, we'll use our own experiences, feel some of your experiences. We'll also gather informative and helpful practical publications, videos, and advice which address all of our challenges. We'll show you how the roadmap as our own personal tool of discovery and our path to help forge ahead together. Now today, our topic is going to be getting the most out of our physical therapy. We're gonna to start today's discussion with William Lowe. William, share with us what you would have on that topic for us today, sir. Yeah, so I guess, um, so, I've been, um, so I've been in this whole uh, stroke recovery journey thing for a while now. And right now, what I do for a living is I basically teach and I coach stroke survivors by showing them how to modify their exercises so that they can recover with a lot more ease and certainty. And I guess throughout my time doing this over the years, one of the most things, most common things I've noticed is that a lot of stroke survivors, their typical experience of therapy goes something along the lines of them going to therapy and them talking to their therapist and their therapist just giving them the exercise and telling them to go home and see how it goes. And I find that in most cases when a stroke survivor experiences a scenario where they're just going to a therapist for exercise and then they're just leaving with leaving to go home and see how it goes, that their, their outcome in recovery or their potential for recovery is not as good compared to another stroke survivor who, go, who goes to their therapist and, and they not only do they ask for the exercise given, but they also go the extra mile and they ask their therapist and have a conversation about why it is that that exercise is going to be relevant to their situation and allow them to walk unassisted for the very first time, uh, mm -hmm. whether this be with or without a cane or, or be able to wake up their hand for the very first time. Um, and Ralph, I was just wondering if you had any thoughts on this uh, during your time as a stroke survivor and interacting with, a lot of stroke survivors in the past. Um, I do, because okay. I've um, helped 12 in person. I'm not a um, physical therapist, but I guess I pretend to be with um, stroke survivors. I've also worked with a number of stroke survivors, I mean, with a number of physical therapists. And I took uh, six of those stroke survivors to their physical therapists. And one of the things I found out was that um, uh, it's a really good idea to um, establish a good relationship with your physical therapist and you get more out of, uh, out of it. Otherwise, if, if you don't interact with them, they're just going to give you what um, they think is best uh, and you won't have much of an understanding about, like William was saying, like you were saying, William, uh, about how that fits into what you're trying to do. Um, I'm also a big believer in getting homework. I don't think we get better 45-minute um, ses or hour sessions a couple of times a week. Um, like you, William, I also adapt things. But what I typically do is I find a lot of stroke survivors are really literal. So they go to therapy and they say, uh, and they do something with on the parallel bars with um, a maple block, a therapy block. And then they think they have to have that stuff at home. What I've done is adapted a walker and a piece of four by four to that. So what I always try and do is adapt things so they work easily with things that you might already have so that you can spend a lot more time 
um, at home. But the thing about establishing a good relationship and asking for homework is that physical therapists want to help people. So if you get homework from them and you do it and you go back in and demonstrate something much better than you could do it the week before, um, they're going to get excited for you. And they're going to you know, be thinking about how they can move you along and they're going to be willing to give you homework and you're going to build a rapport um, that doesn't exist with a lot of um between a lot of stroke survivors and their physical therapist. Well, those are very good points. And I'd like to break in if I might, and uh, just interject a quick point. Um, one of the most powerful things that I started to discover as I was going to my therapy, an occupational therapist had a sign in her office that said a good patient is a patient who participates. And I really took that to heart. I took, as you said, Ralph, uh, I took my exercises, I went home, I did them. When I came back in, i have been doing them. Uh, she was very impressed. Uh, apparently not too many stroke survivors are uh, ready, willing and able to go to work, which is what it takes. And another thing to, uh, sort of rebut both of your statements is that I found that a lot of times I don't think it's by on purpose but the therapists don't really explain what you're trying to do so if I don't understand what I'm doing and I see an exercise I, I might be doing it wrong and if I don't see any purpose or why understanding as to why I'm doing it I don't like to do it uh, but if I do understand why I'm doing it, it helps me, to, it help, motivates me to want to do it more. So those are just two points I thought I'd share quickly. Um, and uh, certainly I'm, open this up for anybody else who would like to respond. I, I found it the same way in, in my own recovery. I'm somebody who has to understand everything. I made that perfectly clear to my therapist from the beginning, you know, because I wanted to... Um, I wanted to be able to put the pieces together myself because I knew that I was going to have to rely on myself as much or more than the uh, physical therapist because I only had a limited number of uh, sessions for the insurance company. So I wanted to, you know, when I was done with physical therapy, I wanted to, you know, know how to continue. That's why the homework, that's why the understanding. And I think that a lot of stroke survivors have problems with this because they're not proactive. They haven't had the realization that um, you have to look out for yourself. This is something else that we're going to talk about on the roadmap because it's true. Um, also with the way that you deal with your neurologist and primary care and everything that you do. Um, uh, it's important to take responsibility. And I think it's a... Uh, takes a lot of um, some time. It takes a while for stroke survivors to get around to um, realizing that. So one of the things we hope to do is help people along with that realization that your recovery is really basically up to you and these other people are, can be helpful. And maybe here's how you navigate the whole thing to end up with a plan like I kind of made for myself. I hadn't, you know, really thought this out at that point, but I guess I basically did what we're talking about doing here. You know, figured Absolutely. it out. Those, so those are good points, Ralph. All good points because I was never told it's up to you. We're just guiding you along the way to get started. But actually it's up to you. And a good point you brought up was that you told your therapist up front right away, you have to you want to know why you're doing it and what's it, what is accomplishing so that you would have that motivational factor at work uh, as you, you know, uh, began your journey. William, do you have anything as well to share along those same points? Oh yeah. I mean, a hundred percent. So when I first had my stroke, uh, gee, it's um, coming up to 10 years now, back in 2011, um, that was really when, this whole idea that the brain could actually adapt itself after a brain injury such as stroke, that was actually coming to the surface. Um, but 
there was still a lot of therapists out there who believed that most of the recovery occurred in the first six months and it really stopped there. Um, mm. So I, I mean, I mean, I was like Ralph when I first started my journey. Um, I noticed that I noticed that some therapists they didn't they didn't go out of their way to explain why why a particular exercise was going to help me achieve my goal. Um, and because of the lack of information which was out there, um, there were, which, which should have told me what to expect going into this stroke recovery or stroke journey, I took the incentive on my own part as a 17-year-old when I first had my stroke mm -hmm. to really understand you know, what I had to do to, to get the ball rolling in my recovery because sometimes um, when therapists explain things to me and, and I know this because prior to doing what I'm doing now, I, I previously studied to become an occupational therapist in the past. A lot of the things which my therapists were telling me, they were explaining it to me in medical jargon and I didn't really understand what they meant. So I took it upon myself to really dig deep and ask them to explain things in a way in which I could understand so that I could go home and I could apply what they were showing me in the clinic or in the hospital to my own, re own recovery. And I guess put, put together the puzzle pieces as Ralph was saying, so that I could have a framework or system in which I was able to understand how to tackle recovery after stroke. Those are that's fantastic. And as well, again, you had the foresight to see that you were really essential to taking charge off of what the therapist taught you. And as Ralph intimated, uh, the therapist gave Ralph what he needed because he needed to know how and why. And you did a lot of research on your own. But uh, that, that brings us to, around to the point. Did you have a good relationship with your therapist in the beginning? Ralph, did you feel your therapist follow through on what you, you, what you outlined to them, what you needed? Did they, uh, did they respect well, that? No. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I've, um, I lived in a small town and I went to a rehab hospital in a, in a city and I was there for three weeks and I had great physical therapists there. I had an occupational therapist, a hand and arm class and a physical therapist. I saw the physical therapist twice a day and I did pool therapy. And then I went back to my small town. There was one outpatient uh, and uh, outpatient physical therapy. And um, I didn't think the, the physical therapist was very good, wasn't very interested in getting in, in a relationship with me. And so that's maybe kind of uh, from the fact that I didn't hit on what I'm talking about now right away made me seek it out because I kind of had it in the rehab hospital and then I didn't really have it. So I actually started calling back to the rehab hospital because I got better support there. But then, you know, I moved and uh, I started experiencing other uh, physical therapists. I was lucky enough to get in with a neuro NDT trained or a neuro physical therapist. If you have one near you, I highly recommend them because they understand how the whole connections between the brain and the physical therapy work. And uh, it's very different experience. Anyhow, so I, I had a better relationship personally, and then I ended up taking, I think, four of the six stroke survivors that I've taken to physical therapy to her. And be, she believes in homework, and she knew that I'd give, been given homework. She also knew that I was going to these stroke survivors' houses two days a week for an hour and doing physical therapy with them. So she would say, keep doing high stepping or um, go to vertical leg extension or, you know, whatever. Uh, when I pick them up, sometimes they would allow me in the back. Sometimes they wouldn't. Uh, I, I learned a lot when I got to go in the back, but I always got homework for not only myself, but everybody that I, I took there. And I took a couple of people for over a year, twice a week. Uh, uh, I like to share something real quickly along those lines. Uh, with the neurotherapist, I was fortunate myself to have one as well. And I also, in my different therapies, speech therapy, occupational, and uh, 
and uh, physical therapy. There was one young person who had just started therapy. And then there was this one woman who had over 35 years experience uh, also was a physical therapist. I get, I kept getting assigned the young therapist and I felt, I don't want to slight therapists at all, but she was new. And obviously the older and more mature therapist who'd been around for over three decades really was a, a night and day comparison in, in terms of therapists. I requested that I have her only. And uh, I didn't know, I didn't know the, you know, the protocol of therapists that if I tell the person in the front desk, if I only want this therapist, uh, will they do that? They were more than happy to accommodate me. So I'd like to share, and I, again, I had a stroke, I had a hemorrhagic stroke 22 months ago. I am brand new on this road map and so thankful it exists for myriad reasons. But um, one of them is that means so much, especially to a, a newbie like myself to find out that I have a bigger responsibility than I thought. This is not a pulled muscle or a broken bone I'm healing up from, it's a stroke. So we have to be able to share this with uh, other people and uh, our experiences. And William, do you have anything else you'd like to share today? Uh, I mean, just the fact that, um, you know, there is, there is support out there in recovery after stroke. And I think, I mean, in hindsight of when I started my journey, um, I was I was a 17 year old. Um, it really forced me to grow up um, and and come out of this fantasy land that um, I was I was going to be fully recovered in maybe three or four months, but rather um, <laughs> that I would have to leverage the support available in order to get this handled. Um, so I quickly realized from the start that um, just just going back to what we had discussed earlier that because there wasn't a lot of information out there, especially on the internet about recovery after stroke, that my therapist and my clinicians and doctors, they were the best source of information at the time. And if I was going to understand this and really take on this, this uh, I guess, challenge of recovery, then I would have to be well-equipped to actually understand the reasoning behind why exercise is actually drive recovery and how to actually make this happen on my own when I go home because the therapists aren't going to be there. Um, and it even got to a point where I reached what I thought was a good level of understanding, but I wanted to take it a lot further. So that's when I studied to become an occupational therapist at OT school. Um, but I've since stopped because now I, I coach stroke survivors online on their recovery. That's but yeah, I mean, I'm just saying, um, like, this this isn't a journey which you can do alone. Um, you will need you will need a team of of people to help you along the way. Um, for myself, I've 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 been very selective of all of the clinicians and and doctors in in my life, um, and I've sort of set up an all star team to guide me along the way and really bounce bounce ideas and questions so that I can help myself in my own recovery and also help them because I think a lot of clinicians and a lot of therapists, they really pride, they really take pride in helping someone who wants to be helped, especially a stroke survivor. Um, and when they can see that a stroke survivor goes home and does the exercise and comes back the next day with, with um, I guess, new movement or being able to walk in more of a rhythm compared to the day before, I think it's really rewarding for them to know that this is someone who wants to be helped. Um, and I want to see this story play out as I continue to treat them. I looked at, I looked at my therapist as a, as a bit of a portal or, or a doorway into understanding just the basics and then going to work, I'm going to work myself on, uh, as they coached me along, being prepared to work on myself and on my own, because that's the majority of the work we're going to do. But they are the the gatekeepers, if you will, into this new realm of discovery. 
as uh, we all <laughs> are well acquainted with the fact that uh, I too uh, thought I would be healed up once I got <laughs> out of the hospital and, and once I got home, I could get, I had a gym in my garage. I just hit the gym about three, four weeks, maybe six weeks and I'd be okay. <laughs> so uh, the therapists really are an important uh, measure of, of how we start and our understanding. Wouldn't you say, Ralph? Yeah, I got three things to say. Uh, I also thought, you know, oh, I'll just, you know, do this. I, I was had my stroke on my exercise bike training for the senior games, and I thought, well, maybe I'll just, maybe I'll still enter them. You know, it's a month <laughs> away. Yeah, right. Uh, so I experienced that too. Number two was we were talking uh, earlier about uh, physical therapists and then William was talking about assembling a team and being critical. Um, we talked about this the other day, but in the States you can request another physical therapist, like you were saying you requested, and they will often stick you with the, with the uh, inexperienced person because the person with experience is in too much demand. Now, yeah. arm bikes are good, but when they stick you on the arm bike for 15 of your 45 minutes, you know you're in trouble. Right. You know, because you're not <laughs> getting personal attention. Right. And so I, like you, demanded personal attention. And uh, if I could get the real therapist, uh, you know, I was also doing a dance because I was a, a, a patient there and I was taking people there. So, you know, that was interesting. And the third thing was, all this kind of plays into like something that we've talked about discussing on the, on the roadmap, which is how to become your own physical therapist, how to do it at home, how to, how to take it from what we're talking about now when you don't have the physical therapist and integrate it into your life and into your routine and into your program and in, in ultimately into your recovery. So well, I think we'll, that we'll get to that next time. I think that we've covered some very good points and that, uh, that we, you know, a therapist, uh, they're not going to be there. That's point number one. They're only there for a, a certain period of time. And overall, and eventually, we're going to have to, to take charge of that. But if you have a physical therapist, if you're just starting out on your journey on the roadmap, remember, uh, pump that therapist for information. As Ralph uh, said, it just makes such a big difference when we know why you're doing what you're doing and what you're trying to achieve by doing it. Um, whether it's spasticity in an arm or uh, trying to get some uh, mobility and start to walking again and find out what it is that you're specifically doing with these sheets of homework they give you. They don't just hand them out and say, hey, go home and do this. And um, I, I think that's a good start. And any points uh, to end up closing us out here? Ralph, do you have any points for uh, people with their therapy? Any pointers? Um, just going to reiterate, um, it's your recovery. You have to take charge of it. Okay, William, what do you have for us to close us out, sir? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think I just thought of a really good metaphor. Um, so this is something I've been thinking quite a lot about when it comes to recovery. So I like to think about recovery after stroke as a giant staircase. Um, obviously, um, leading up to leading up to your potential after recovery, um, and when you first start your journey, um, you can see the very first step, but you don't know what you have to do to actually take that first step. Um, and what is going to get you past that first step is is your therapist. So basically your therapist is going to provide you with the understanding and the exercises needed to make that first step in your recovery. But then in order to get to the next step, what you will need is you will need the lessons which you learnt before taking the first step and so on and so on and so forth. And I find that when it comes to recovery after stroke, if you don't have those lessons you learnt in between steps from your therapist or from your, or from yourself that you can't get go up the staircase to reach your potential after the stroke um, and that's why therapists are so important because if you can understand if you can get those lessons from your therapist and you can really process them and how they relate to your recovery then you can 
it's soon as you get into a position where you've adopted all the mindsets needed to drive this on your own. I think that's fantastic. I think that's, yeah. a, that's a great analogy, metaphor uh, for us, the, uh, the step analogy. And, and uh, your points as well, Ralph. Uh, I think we've got a, a pretty good understanding here of what we want to do and how, our, how important it is that we get the most out of our relationship with our therapist in order to facilitate uh, our getting to that first step, William. And uh, I want to thank William Lowe today for being with us, Ralph Preston, and I'm Joe Quinn. And uh, I'd like to say uh, we really look forward to having everyone here with us again next time on the Roadmap. Thank you and good night.